Third Nephi cannot be read or understood outside of a family context. It was early in the morning when they came to the temple. We know that men, women, and children were there, and the mothers must have gotten the children up early. I think they even came fasting. There wouldn't have been much time for breakfast. So much happened on that first day that they must have all been coming for some kind of very sacred gathering there at their temple. Truly, this scene is not of this world. The Book of Mormon takes us to a realm that is celestial. It is only through our own spiritual connection with the Lord that we even get a sense as far as what that must have been like. I think that's why when you read chapter 17, especially reading it out loud, you, you start feeling like you're being transported to another place. And I find it fascinating that it is through little children that this place is opened up, little children with Jesus Christ. That innocence, purity, sweetness, teachability, um, that's all packaged in those little children with the Savior. And he then blesses them. First, to bless those who had been injured or were ill or sick, he brings the, the maimed, the blind, the halt, the deaf. I imagine there were many children in that group because children didn't live very long in the ancient world if they were uh, suffering from disabilities of any kind. They didn't have medical conditions that would allow for them to live long. I think there is something in that for everyone to see little children, and in some ways I think we are all little children, especially when we're in the environment of the Savior. And I, I think of myself being a grandmother, and you see your little grandchildren, in some ways an extension of yourself. That relationship of those little children with Jesus Christ that opened up a whole new level of communication than they had seen thus far. Jesus wants to reciprocate, as he always does, with a great blessing to these people. And it begins by Jesus standing himself in the midst, in the middle, the children round about him, and the parents in a broader circle around them. Jesus then first blesses the parents. He prays for them. And the text says, no one can imagine the joy that filled our hearts when we heard him pray for us unto the Father. He was probably praying that they would be good parents to be able to do what these little children needed to have done for them. And then, as Jesus looked around and blessed them, he said, now is my joy full. He then turns to the children and he blesses them. And afterwards, he turns to the parents and he says, behold your little ones. I don't think he's telling them, well, just look at your kids, aren't they cute? He's saying, behold your little ones. They're now yours in a way that they weren't before. And this blessing was confirmed in the presence of God, Jesus himself, witnesses, and angels who then came down and ministered unto the children especially. That's an amazing thing to imagine the Lord himself administering such a blessing to the parents and these children whom he loved. The adults that are all around are observing this. They are not direct participants, but indirectly, they are there too. And, and it, it's a uniting. Um, the atonement unifies us. And you sense, in, in, a, in a sense, I think I get a little feel that all generations, all time periods are all combined in that little area together. The hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children linking together. Um, a reminder, a little taste of what could be truly the eternities because of the, the atonement of Christ. He doesn't leave, I'm sure, until he knows that those little children who had been blessed were being properly taught 
and the order of the church had been properly instituted. Those little children, I think, are the key to understanding the book of 4th Nephi, which follows when there will be four generations of wonderful righteousness and peace and, and happiness among the people like never before, maybe on the face of the earth. How could that happen? Well, for one thing, those little children would have lived, because it was peaceful, uh, for quite a long time. Their grandchildren would have known them, which means four generations of people would have been taught by those little children who remembered the blessings that Jesus had given. For many years, people could say, my grandmother told me what it was like when I was there with the Savior. Now, that kind of testimony allows for the Zion community to be built that 4th Nephi reports. And I don't think Jesus would have gone until he was sure that that was securely in place.